here with us now in the studio to discuss the cartel's increasingly brazen tactics and what's being done to stop them is Arturo Sarucan. He's Mexico's ambassador to the United States. Ambassador, I was trying to ask Cecilia there what this says about your government's control of Juarez. When you've put in 10,000 troops into the city, it doesn't suggest you have very much, does it? Right. I think that one of the problems that we've seen is that violence is ratcheted because the drug syndicates operating in Ciudad Juarez are feeling pressured. They're losing market share. They're losing the ability to successfully ship drugs across the border and guns and weapons south into Mexico. So what we're seeing is that, first of all, a power struggle between different rival gangs, and second, their willingness to fight back against the government's efforts to shut down their operations. To what extent does killing Americans, though, an American who worked for the consulate there, change your government's tactics? Does it have to change your government's tactics? Look, I, I think that in this case, we, we have obviously immediately um, conveyed our condolences to our colleagues at the State Department and the staff at the U.S. Consulate in Ciudad Juarez. But I don't think that the nationality per se of those people who were unfortunately and tragically killed should vary the strategy. The strategy has to be sustained. There are no U-turns in the fight against the drug traffickers. We need to sustain that ability to shut them down, Kathy. You say it doesn't change the strategy, but it does change the message. This is the first time the cartels have sent such a direct message to Washington. What are they trying to say by killing consulate employees? I think we still have to be careful, Kathy, because we still don't know the motives behind the killings. That is, we don't know if they were killed or targeted because they were consular employees, if there was a specific link to that fact, or they were killed because of other reasons, mistake, mistaken identities. That is being investigated. So we, we have to be a bit careful with that, I think, at this stage. Across the country, and we saw as well there was, of course, the violence in Acapulco this weekend, it seems that law enforcement officials are targets of the cartels. This is a deliberate attempt at intimidation. It makes the government's job even harder. How do you get round that equation? How do you get round the intimidation of the very people who are meant to be protecting Mexicans from the cartels when they're the people being targeted themselves? First of all, it's to continue working to strengthen uh, civilian law enforcement institutions and, and police agencies. It's to continue to ensure that the judiciary has the tools to be able to provide swift justice. It is to continue working with Mexican society to have Mexicans and Mexican citizens and NGOs be a post stakeholder. It doesn't seem to have worked. I mean, look at the violence this weekend. The country seems to be declining in terms of security. Well, Cassie, but th there's, one, there's one reality that has to be understood. Whoever thinks or thought that this is a rapid solution, that there's a silver bullet that will solve a challenge that has been festering for a decade overnight is probably smoking too much of what we've been seizing in Mexico. It's going to take time, it's going to take a lot of effort, and it won't be over tomorrow. Arturo Sarucan, the Mexico's ambassador to the United States, thanks so much for joining me. And we can turn Thank now. You.